lucid dream means when the dreamer is or becomes aware of that he or she is dreaming. In the urban myth or in popular cultures, it's been depicted as where you can act out and manipulate as you like, but that's not always the case. Indeed, in some cases, it seems, the dreamscape forms a world of its own and gives off a strong impression that it doesn't really want you to become lucid. Dreams are always a bit funny and beyond our usual rational perceptions, but it is such a moment when a dream forms a very specific and detailed world that it becomes almost realistic in its own way, and you as a dreamer feels like you are a foreign visitor or an alien in your own dream, that I find it most amusing and unnerving. That's when dreams enter the realm of a glitch in the matrix or parallel universe. So, here are a collection of such dreams. Dreams that become a world of its own, dreams that outwit your lucidity. As always, handpicked, translated and narrated by your host, Anthony. One day in a dream, I found myself walking down the street of Grey London. Everybody on the street was wearing period clothes, long skirts, hats and gloves, while when I looked down myself, I was still in my pajamas. Anyway, I ended up on the platform of a tube station which was dark and cold. My wandering steps stopped in front of a bench, and the two women sitting on it said their lines as if by a cue. It was sunny in the morning, but it's now all grey again. On top of what's going on around the world these days, it makes me gloomy. All in Korean, even though they all looked local English, which I found amusing. The platform fell into silence again with everybody there standing still, until as if by the next cue, an old gentleman tapped his cane on the ground and said, It feels so ominous. Again, in Korean. I found it so funny, so I asked the old man in English, Can you speak English? No? Yes? Why you speak Korean? I felt everybody's eyes turning to me visibly shaken. Regardless, I kept pestering the old man with, Hello? Why? Tell me. Then suddenly the two women on the bench repeated their lines with shaky voices. Uh, mm, it was sunny in the morning, but it's now all grey again. On top of what's going on around the world these days, it makes me gloomy followed by the old gentleman tapping his cane on the ground and saying, It feels so ominous. Then a little boy ran down the stairs to the platform, flying some papers from his bag. Extra news! Extra! A train is out of control and it's going to crush into this station! He said, again in Korean which sent the crowd on the platform all frantic. The boy came up to me too, handing over the flyer. I brazenly asked him, Hey kid, how do you say extra in English? I saw the eyes of the boy going trembling before turning away from me. By now, I was fully aware that it was a dream, so I jumped onto the rail track and theatrically declared, no worries, everybody. I'm going to stop the train. People screamed and shouted that it was impossible. Get off the track right away. But I replied, Don't worry. It's just a dream. People all looked at me with frozen face. And then, one by one, poof. They evaporated on the spot, leaving empty clothes falling down where they stood. 
At the end of it, I was left alone in the dark station, in total silence. I've been training myself to have lucid dreams, and I reached the stage I could control myself in the dream, say, probably about seventy percent. In one such a lucid dream, I found myself in a luxury shop. I picked up everything that caught my fancy, kind of clothes and shoes I wouldn't have dreamed of even touching in real life. The shop staffs were all extremely friendly and treated me like a king. As I marched down to the cashier with a staff carrying a big pile of stuffs I chose behind me, all the staffs came out and clapped their hands like I was some sort of a hero. So at the cashier, I cockily pulled out my card to pay. Oh, wait, it's a transportation card. The cashier and the staffs around looked at me with wide eyes. I searched through my wallet, but there were just useless membership cards, loyalty cards, and such. I was embarrassed, but just looked at the cashier and said, "Oh, come on! It's just a dream." The cashier looked at me surprised, but soon sternly said. And you can't even create your money yet. She then called for a security to throw me out of the shop. In a dream, I was walking along an empty space. I already kind of knew it was a dream. Then my ex-boyfriend appeared out of nowhere, walking along next to me. Our breakup was acrimonious, so I was pretty annoyed by his presence. The ex kept trying a conversation, saying things like, "You're looking well. I love your long hair." But I, knowing it was a dream, shoot back in the manner I wouldn't have dared in real life, saying. None of your business, is it? Hair? <laughs> it's not real. It's just extension. The ex seemed hurt by my acid response. Why do you say like that? It's not like you, he said. I can say whatever I like in my dream, can't I? I said. He seemed a bit shocked, and shook his head, but again pulled himself together and said. What are you talking about? You are just being childish because you haven't forgiven me. What? I know it's all just a dream. Was my response. X was now clearly desperate. He gestured to hush me and whispered, "Please, I'm here to help you." But next moment, he was gone. And all the surrounding trees and grass also disappeared, leaving me alone on the empty road. And on that road, I kept encountering one by one all the people I had bad memory about: a colleague who sexually harassed me, my grandpa whom I don't get on with, a boy who bullied me in my teenage. But all of them I failed to deal with. And it carried on, until I met my old PE teacher, who used to give corporal punishments to his students. I finally managed to forgive him, and only then I could wake up from the dream. One day in my dream, I found myself in the world of two-dimensional illustration of a children's fairy tale. Everything was drawn with thick black outlines and bright color blocks, and the scene changed as I moved on, like the pages of a book flipping. 
Obviously, I realized it was a dream. I was walking over the field and ran into a young boy who looked like a cut-out paper doll. He said he was on the quest to rescue the princess. Would I join in? I thought that would be fun, so said, "Why not? Let's go." The boy seemed not to believe me easily. But princess is prisoned on the top of the castle. We'd have to fight off dragons, monsters, and prison guards all the way up," he said. "Yeah, yeah, whatever. Let's go already," I said. "You are the bravest man I've met. Everybody else turned me down. I'm a bit scared myself, to be honest," he said. I nonchalantly replied. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't die in a dream. The next moment, the background ripped open. A giant hand broke in, grabbed me by my head, and took me behind the scene. On the other side, paper doll-looking people patched up the rip, leaving me in the dark. I stood in the void a while, and then figured out it was the world of a fairy tale book. I fumbled my way along, probably about three pages back. I could hear somebody talking on the other side, so I wetted the wall with my spit, which made the paper wall soft. After several attempts, I could finally make a hole on it. On the other side was the scene of the field I had walked along. Indeed, there was the young boy from earlier talking to. Guy looked like a doodle by a three-year-old kid, but upon close inspection, I realized his eyes, hair, and clothes resembled me. I gasped, but the next moment felt a giant hand once again grabbing me by my head and throwing me away. I flew over, screaming, and. Walk up from the dream. I have been trying to have a lucid dream. One day, I finally realized I was in a dream. I was so excited, so I ran all around shouting, "It's a dream! I'm in a dream!" Suddenly, a group of guys started chasing after me with the knives, hammers, and what not in their hands. I ran away, but then a person on the balcony threw a flower pot at me. A taxi driver tried to run over me, and the owners of the shop on the way ran out to beat me down with a club. In the end, I was caught by the mob. I cried and said. I'm sorry. I'm gonna keep silent next time. People replied, "Well, next time," and killed me with a big cleaver. That was the last time I had a lucid dream so far. I'm a big fan of comics. One of my perennial favorite is about a shy baseball player who is bullied in his team but finds eventual success by starting a new in a different team. One day I had a dream and I found myself in the setting of that very comic, practicing baseball on the field. I wasn't sure what was going on and just stood there. Then the other characters around me called me by the name of the main character of the comic, and shouted, "You fool! What are you waiting? Aren't you practicing?" I wasn't still sure what this situation was, and shouted back at them as my usual temperamental self, "Who do you think you are calling me a fool, you piece of shit?" The eyes of the coach, fellow players, and even the spectators who were sitting far away all turned to me, clearly surprised. 
Then the colleague who called me a fool came over and whispered in my ear behind his glove. Uh, are you new in this? You should be playing your character. What do you mean, this? What are you talking about? I said. The guy frowned and shouted to somebody, It doesn't fit. Get a different one. And with that, I woke up. In one dream, I was sitting on a bench in some sort of park. At first, I didn't realize it was a dream until I saw a melting, flowing down clock floating in the air in the middle of the park. You know, like the one in a Salvador Dali's painting. I then realized it was a dream and just relaxed into the peaceful atmosphere, humming, stretching, and yawning carefully. The peace and quiet was then disturbed by the commotion from a family who were picnicking on the lawn in front of me. Something was wrong with their daughter, apparently, and her parents were frantically calling around for help. I honestly didn't want to have my peaceful rest in the dream disturbed, so tried to ignore them. But then the mother came up to me, crying, Please, call a doctor! Um, I don't have my phone with me, sorry. I said and stood up to escape. But the mother hung on to my sleeves, crying, Please, my daughter is dying! I scoffed and said, Well, she's fine, it's just a dream. The face of the woman reddened with a rage and spouted, Well, it's just a dream for you! Suddenly the Dalis clock in the air started running backwards. The mother seemed to be lost. She fell on her knees and cried. For some reason in my mind came up the sentence, Salvador Dali is a surrealist artist. And with that, I woke up from the dream. A friend of mine once had a dream, which dragged on more than a month in that dream's timeline. It tried everything to wake up from the dream, even jumping off a bridge. Nothing worked. He finally went out to a busy central station and made a protest, shouting, This is all just a dream! Please, let me wake up from it! People looked at him like a madman. In the end, police came and locked him away in a psychiatric asylum. He kept screaming at the doctor, It's a dream! I'm not mad! I just want to wake up from this dream! The doctor then slipped. Calm down, we all know that. Doctor then realized his mistake and exchanged a glance with the nurse. He then burst it into a laughter and said, <laughs> Aren't you lucky? Then my friend woke up. Hi, it's Anthony here, and thank you very much for your listening. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I know I did. Glitch in the Matrix is one of my favorite subjects, and glitchy dreams would be the next best thing. A comment in my last episode about dreams mentioned that it is not common to talk about dreams in some other cultures. I think I do remember an old book of European etiquette states that it was considered a bad manner to talk about one's dreams. Bad manner or not, if I had such an amusing and weird dreams as in today's stories, I don't think I could shut up about it. 
I hope you don't mind either, because certainly there will be many more episodes of all sorts of weird and wonderful dreams in the future. If you enjoyed my work, why don't you give this little channel a boost by clicking that like and notification button, leaving me a comment, and even better, by subscribing to my channel. If you have already, thank you. Until the next, stay safe and take care.